So every public speaker guru on the planet will tell you that to start a talk, you need to do two things. Either you start with a story or you start with a question. I will not do either of those things. <laughs> what I will do, I will accelerate straight to my point and share with you exactly the essence of my message. Now, what I'm here to do is to talk about reinvention. Many of you may think and look at that slide, think about the title of this talk, and wonder if there is any disconnect here. But for me, reinvention is all about of letting go of everything but your very best, and then finding even better way of using it. And if there's one thing I know for sure, is this one. The true essence of sustainability is reinvention. If we want to hold on, if we want to do endure, if we want to survive, we must reinvent. We must ride the waves of change rather than being squished by them, rather than fighting them every day. My playground is the world of business, so the stories I'll share today all come from the world of business. But whatever sector of society or whatever part of life you're coming from, reinvention is all around us. And it's very clear that the world is in desperate need of reinvention right now. And the question is why some of us are so good at it again and again and again, while others are so afraid to let go? And how can we all become much better at that? My own introduction to these questions and to the quest for answers came from a kind of unpleasant and not very much an exciting space. Um, it was not by choice, it was forced upon me. I was born and raised in the Soviet Union at the time where the country was going through immense deterioration. Uh, this is the memory of my childhood, the most prevalent memory of my childhood, which is standing in line. Uh, the food was really severely short, so you could only purchase a portion per person, and my mom, trying to feed us, would bring all of us to the line where we'd stand for, line, for hours at a time, including my newborn baby brother, so that we can get four portions instead of one. And if you think about this kind of process, the reinvention came really at the time of collapse. In 1991, three individuals came together in a secret location and signed an agreement that dissolved Soviet Union. It was not a discussed matter, there was no referendum, there was no prior warming. Next day we woke up and there was no country. There was no money, there was no government, there was no laws, there was no rules. And most importantly, there were no value system anymore. So reinvention was the only choice we had. We had to figure out everything about who we are and how we're gonna live. For my republic, as you know, the Soviet Union was 15 republics. For my republic, Kazakhstan, it was so severely difficult that it took us two years to introduce our own currency. We borrowed the currency of other country before. So it was not a subtle, tiny reinvention. But for me personally, it was the most beautiful kind of journey. Here I am, I'm very young, I'm just coming of age, and everything I thought was real, money, government, laws, rules, your very identity, suddenly became very superficial and disappeared overnight, which opened this beautiful opportunity to ask myself, who am I truly, and what really matters, what is really unshakable. But for many people in the country, this was not a beautiful experience. Suicide rates spiked. No family that I know was spared of that disease, and my family included, we lost people to suicide. And while Kazakhstan is a beautiful reinvention story with a happy ending, by the way, on the left, that's an office building where I spend a lot of my hours. So we have our happy ending, we reinvented ourselves continuously for the last 24 years. I, in some weird way, being in a global business, feel like I'm living through the sort of deja vu, that we again are living in a world where people are refusing to let go and therefore committing suicide. And this time I'm talking about business. I feel like business globally is really refusing to let go and forbidding itself from reinventing and therefore killing itself. And the poster childs that are probably most known to you are these two companies, Kodak and Nokia. They're the ones that recently got killed very publicly. And you can say, well, the companies were really killed by technology. Not really. At its best, Kodak controlled 90% of all film market in the US. 
At its best, Nokia controlled 40% of the market globally. So they were really very, very strong companies, but the surprising part is that technology that many assumed killed them was their own baby. Kodak is the one who invented digital technology, so it's not like it was squished by some sort of startup on the outskirts. And Nokia had a very large portfolio of smartphones at the time of its um, impending bankruptcy. It didn't go bankrupt, it ended, it got to sell all of its telecom business to avoid bankruptcy. So it's not really about technology. It is this refusal to let go. It's a refusal to find a new and better version of yourself that ultimately got these companies killed. Now, for me, that is a sobering statistic that Nokia and Kodak are really not uh, a kind of exceptions. If you look at the original Fortune 500 list, today, 89% of the companies are gone that appeared on the original list. And you might think, okay, these are all the big kind of companies, so uh, they are more um, stagnant, if you will. They are more uh, stubborn. Uh, what about startups? Startups should be excellent at reinvention. This is why they came into this world. Well, very few of them survive as well. Which brings me to a question. How can we get better at holding on? Is there a way that we can sustain ourselves differently? 4,000 miles away from here, in a tiny Alpine country of Slovenia, in a very, very, very small city of Idria, a group of managers came together in the spring of 2004 to ask themselves, how can we hold on? The company was working in um, air conditioning business, ACs, cooling and heating units, and the company name was Hydria, still is, it still exists on the planet. And the question they were asking was not just a kind of superficial question, the life of the entire town depended on it. At that time, spring 2004, Hydria was squished from two sides. On one side, uh, there was a kind of uh, high-priced, heavily branded Western European brands, and on the other side, there was a cheap Chinese imports. So Hydria was very clear that if it's not reinventing itself, it will die. And most companies facing this situation do what you probably all know, they cut costs. They decide to shrink themselves. They decide to lay off people. They decide to kind of buckle up and um, you know, tighten their belts and weather the storm. But Hydria decided to do something completely opposite. It decided to ask itself a very simple question. What do we do best and is there somebody else but the market that we're in now that needs it? It turned out there was. At the heart of AC unit is an electric motor. And in spring 2004, there was a whole industry desperately looking for electric motor solutions, and that was automotive industry. In 2005, Hydra introduced its first car part as a provider now, as a supplier to automotive sector. And you can imagine what a huge leap it is for a tiny, tiny company hidden in the tiny, tiny mountains to go from AC to car manufacturers. But today, 10 years later, Hydria supplies to some of the most prestigious brands in the world. And every fifth new diesel power car globally is ignited with their solution, along with many other parts. They're really omnipresent, I wouldn't be surprised if you are driving electric or diesel, that you have a Hydria part in your car right now. A piece of Slovenia is right there. 10 years, 10 years, that's all it took. It's a remarkable transformation. But what Hydria did, what Hydria knows, what most of us do not know, is not the obvious answer. The obvious answer is been taught in every business school. So if you've ever seen this graph, I guarantee it will look familiar to you every company goes through a growth cycle. And the growth cycle starts and ends. And the secret to survival is starting a new growth cycle before your old cycle expires. But what Hydra understood and others did not is this. In the 20th century, the average cycle took us 75 years. That meant that we had about 37 and a half years to the top and 37 and a half to the bottom, meaning that you could enter a company from college, live in that company your whole life, and retire without ever living through any major reinvention. By millennia, by 2000s, that cycle shrunk to 15 years. We accelerated the speed of change, which means that we have about seven and a half years to the top and about seven and a half years to the bottom, meaning that we need to reinvent. 
much more faster now, but then we accelerate it a little bit more. So the number we're approaching rapidly today is seven years for an average business cycle for a business model. That means that we have to start reinventing our company every three and a half years. Just imagine the speed of reinvention. Just imagine what would it take for us to really take it seriously. Reinvention simply cannot happen at this pace. Every three, four, five years, it averages slightly differently for the industry, but it cannot happen if we continue to take reinvention as a kind of uh, little thing that will happen on its own. We have to build our companies, build our societies, build our systems able to reinvent. We need to see chief reinvention officers at every boardroom. We need to see ministers of reinvention in every cabinet. We need to teach reinvention to our kids so that they come out ready for that change. And they are not scared by that. They are actually excited by that. They are moved by that. They are uh, building on that. And the good news is that you don't need to reinvent from scratch. Companies like uh, Rolls-Royce show to us that you can have exact same product airplane engine, but instead of selling it, you can start leasing it, and that will change your entire perspective. Because instead of starting to push and trying to push as many engines as possible, you're actually trying to uh, elongate the life of each engine as much as possible. That changes everything in your relationship to the world. So to sum up, reinvention is all about letting go and finding that very best in you that you want to hold on to it perpetuating it forward. Reinvention is accelerating. We have to reinvent faster and faster than ever before. And finally, reinvention will not happen on its own. We must make it systemic. But the best news for me is this. When we invite reinvention into our life, when we allow ourselves to let go, we earn the right to choose who we want to be. So why don't we make the best of that choice? Thank you.